Good day, horror fans. Welcome to what eh, we'll call the inaugural episode of uh, The Cutting Room Floor, where we will have artists on once or twice a month to discuss their future projects, history, and the business as much as we are all fans of the industrial side of what these artists do. And today, my first guest is the incomparable Matthew Reed. Matt, how you doing today? Pretty good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, you're a unique individual in this hobby, I would say. Uh, I don't know about that. And well, I say that because as you, I'm sure as you know, and if anyone's listened to Chris Morgan's Halloween Unleashed podcast, it's not difficult to have beef with people in this hobby. It, it can sometimes be a, a, a toxic environment, would you agree? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's been that way for years. From talking to various people, and we've known each other for a few months now, you've been an admin in the, in the Horror Forever group for you know, pretty much since its inception. Um, one reason I started that group was to kind of have a, a, a community without so much toxicity, but I've never once seen a person have a negative thing to say about Matthew Reed. Well, I try every my best, time, man. Every time someone talks about you, he's the nicest guy in the world, always best hair in the business. <laughs> Um, so I think you're a unique individual in that aspect. No one's ever had a bad thing to say about you other than the occasional people that want to, you know, talk shit about your product when they don't know anything about it. But we'll leave that one alone. Right on. Um, start with a little bit of backstory on you, where you're from and where you live. Well, I'm from uh, South Point, Ohio. That's, if you can't tell by the name, it's the southern tip of Ohio. So I live in the tri-state area right by Kentucky, West Virginia, all that. Where do you live now? Still in that same area? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You got a girlfriend, fiance? You married? I got a girlfriend. How is she in in regards to the whole industry? As far as you having a whole shed in your backyard dedicated to to making horror movie props? Oh, she's super supportive about it. She's always pushed me to do better, and you know, she she even critiques my work and stuff. So it kind of keeps me on my toes. That's she's always wonderful. good. Having support, as sometimes you know, having family or or you know seeing it can be a little weird for them, or they can not be so supportive. That's always good to see you got you got passion on both sides for you. Definitely. Do y'all have any kids? No, we had uh, two dogs and three cats though. Oh, that's plenty no, of kids right there. They're enough for us. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you first get into the business? Like, what was your first ex experience with horror movies when you were? Kid, you know, haunted house. What was it? Well, um, I'd say it all. My mom's the one to blame for all this. Um, uh, since I can remember when I was just a toddler, really, I mean, I remember her waking me up when I was, you know, maybe four or five just to watch Aliens on, on TV because she knew that was one of my favorite movies. So she really kind of kick started the whole thing and it just snowballed from there. I had a similar one myself. My sister was too scared to watch movies by herself. She, she'd go get her little six-year-old brother to watch with her. Right on. Um, when, where, what was your first uh, dipping into the making of masks and such? When would you, when did you first start dabbling in that? Well, since I've been into the hobby, I've always kind of been into like refinishing and painting and all that. Um, when I first started out, I would say I was probably around 14 or 15 had no clue what i was doing i actually my first mask i repainted i used latex house paint which if you know anything about latex house paint it, i mean it, it was just a mess we'll put it that way i won't even say what the mask is because it was it's, it's actually a really sought after mask nowadays so I'll, <laughs> I'll leave that part out so i don't get hung but uh after that i didn't i just kind of stayed with collecting and i would you know just refinish like mass produced stuff here and there and i didn't really start making them until about 2011 or 2012 i actually have some of my work behind me my very first mask i made was this leather face here it was actually a ground up sculpt um if you can i don't know if you can see in the video but i mean i didn't really know how to paint all that well back then so you can see it's still cracking it's not in the greatest shape but uh yeah, that was my very first mask. I still have the mold to this day. That's really good for a ground up. And that actually leads me to my next one. What What is the name of your uh, of your of your FX company? For those who don't know, uh, it's House of Horror Productions. 
And was that was that started in 2011, 2012? No, that actually started in uh, 2017 when I actually started producing my own. So it hasn't been around that long. I've been doing this for a while, but haven't really been in the business very long. Gotcha. What was the first mask that you began making on a regular basis that you uh, the, created yourself? The first one I started producing was the Star Killer, and I actually have one blank left back there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I bought a, a master from uh, another individual, and it uh, derived from the original 75 Kirk, and I tried to enlarge that just by pretty much piecing out the the clay press of it and trying to sculpt it larger. Um, I know easier ways nowadays to do it, thanks to a, a friend of mine, but yeah, that, that was the first mask that I produced regularly. And that one's no longer in production? No, no, it's discontinued. I think uh, Andrew from the old Jack in the Box mask actually has the master now. I think he's Black Jack mask or something on eBay. So you might catch a blank every now and then pop up. So I know I checked out your website, and if I'm correct, you have four masks on there at the moment, two, the two H4s and the two H1s, or is the H1 and the H2? Yeah, yeah. Um, so were both of those or any of those all ground-up sculpts, or were they recast of anything else? Uh, the Fry mask was another retool of the same master that the Star Killer came from. It's just I tried, uh, again, I, I just kind of pieced out the, out the sculpt. And try to sculpt the larger. I just try to get my my proportions a little better than I did with the Star Killer with that one. And uh, the H four was is pretty much. I mean, it's. I'm not going to call it a ground up because I I took I had where I did a silicone mold of the fright mask. I still had the sculpt intact, so I shaved off all the features of it and just built off of that to make my H four. So both those I would I would consider both those retools. I was probing the community, asking a few people, because uh, I've got a couple people in the hobby, I, I won't name names, but, you know, who I consult when I want to know, you know, just the, 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 since they're very experienced, the overall best opinions of things, and then just seeing different people around. Your H4 seems to be the most popular one among the community. It's the most common one I see, certainly, and people never have a bad thing to say about it. I'm planning to get one myself. It's honestly, a, I can see a few blanks hanging on that rack up there. It's a, it's a good H4. Yeah, I got a I got a few in progress now. I got another one. I got to start today, actually. And you make two versions of that one, yes, a clean and a, and a, and a more weathered version. Right. Yeah. Um, that was actually I, I. I can't remember off the top of my head who it was, but it was a customer that kind of came up with that idea, and uh, just wanted it really nasty and and grungy. So I kind of ran with it from there, and people seemed to like it an awful bit. Sort of like what Terry Lambert does with his H4. He's got the clean and right. the dirty, though in the movie it never really is, is dirty. But I, I like what seeing people do that because I think the concept's good. Because it's sort of like the H2 versus H1. You know, it's a, it's a more dirty, weathered look. And uh, and it seems to be people prefer a weathered look with their masks. Personally, I like all my hockey masks, my Myers masks to be on the cleaner end. Um, but weather seems, I would say, to be the, the more popular of the two. Yeah, I kind of flip flop back and forth. Sometimes I I want a real clean, like ghostly finish. We're just mostly just flesh, kind of, uh, kind of accents certain areas instead of dirt and grime. But I've always been a, a fan of the Halloween two mask, so I'm, I I love the the nastiness of it. So uh, I I asked people in different Facebook groups to submit some questions. I only got two, um, but the first one's from Alexander Wilkins, and he wants to know the name of your new H one skull. My new sculpt is a uh, uh, Death Prowler 75, is what I'm calling it. It's kind of a, a playoff of, of course, uh, when abbreviated, the DP 75. So it's kind of a playoff of the Dom Post 75 Kirk. And also, um, my favorite, two of my favorite masks, the Night Prowler and uh, the Death Stalker from the old MMP days. I'm always, I'm a huge fan of like the old school indie sculpts. So it's just kind of a homage to them, regardless and, uh, of how you feel about them. <laughs> that new seventy five. Uh, I was I was seeing the thread when you first posted. But what, uh, what was the process of you getting? What was the, that mask originally? Um, and did you recast it? Did you do any changes to it, or is it essentially the same as what the mask that you got? Um, it's it's pretty much a proper enlargement of the the original master I got. I sh I sharpened the features quite a bit, 
as I mean, they were pretty washed out from it being such a small casting and, and due to the enlarging process. So um, I sharpened the lips up quite a bit and just reshaped the jawline because the, the original master is just, well, actually, hang on, I'll grab it and I'll show you. Um, it's cool, but it's, it's still just kind of washed out. The shape's kind of thrown off. Um, it's kind of just kind of bloated. Look, you can see it's kind of small. So, I mean, it needed a, quite a bit of work. The bare bones are there. Um, and here's the the new master. So you can see it quite a bit larger. It's kind of hard to see the details just due to the color of the urethane, but but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And uh, I believe you told me you're going to make three versions of that mask, a, a Kirk, a Halloween one, and a Halloween two. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Okay, fantastic. I know you say you're making them in large, but I know people like Brandon Zach, and shout out Brandon, with a, with a bigger head will appreciate that. Yeah. I know, I think uh, you're going to, you say you're going to send him a test one to see if it fits his big old head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll um, help me out a little bit, too. Now, I see you're wearing that uh, that WMP shirt. Shout out to Chris Morgan. Oh, yeah. Um, Represent. Last, never go away. Um, but another question was from Eric Hofer and asked if you have any plans to make an H6. Uh, I do have an H6 master. It was, uh, I'm probably going to butcher his name here. His name was James Fiera or Ferrara or, or something along those lines. I believe his was a ground-up sculpt. Um I do have plans to maybe tool that in the future and release it. Uh, as of right now, it's kind of on the back burner because I have my H5 I'm working on. And uh, after the H5, I, I'd kind of like to branch out and kind of do some original sculpts. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any of your original work, but I know I've seen that the, the steps you've been making with that H5, and it's coming along really nice. I know right now the hobby's kind of, you know, again, this is just my opinion, but kind of short on good quality H5s other than the Revenge of the Fifth. I haven't really seen one that I've been pleased with. Right, yeah. Um, so, future sculpts, you know, you want to do some custom work yourself. What, anything you're, guys, specifically, or you just want to kind of just mess around and see what you can come up with? I have a few ideas. Uh, as far as just original work, I've always kind of wanted to, to sculpt, like, some witches. Just, there's just something about witches that, like, screams Halloween to me. So, I'd, I'd really like to tackle one of those. Um I'd also like to maybe do a, a couple of universal monsters, you know, like Phantom of the Opera and things such as that, the Creature of the Black Lagoon. So we'll see. If I can get some time, I might start working on those. Now, I see a, a Freddy Krueger behind you. Is that something you're planning on, or is that just uh, something personal of yours? That was actually my second sculpt. It's ground up. Uh, it's too small to wear because, again, at the time, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of experimenting, but... Yeah, I sculpted this back in 2012, I believe it was. But yeah, I don't ever plan on releasing. The sculpt's not in that great of shape. It's starting to crack in certain areas. But yeah, that was actually a ground up of mine. Well, you live and learn, and certainly you, you've mastered the technique over the years. Is, uh, the, the products you make now, and I'm excited to see that uh, the, the new DP-75, is you've certainly mastered your craft. I appreciate that, man. Thanks. All right, well, that's about all the questions I have. Do you have anything specifically you want to plug or, or, or announce or, or discuss? Uh, no, but I'd like to just, you know, thank, of all, thank all my supporters for, you know, being with me these, these past couple of years and continuing to support me. Yeah, I, I really appreciate all of you. And on the note, I really appreciate you being the uh, inaugural guest here, man. I know uh, for the fans watching and for you as well, I know I, I want to, to say, you know, bear with me as I get this down a little bit. You know, Matt will attest that this this morning was the first time that I had attempted this at all, and we were taking about thirty minutes just working through the bugs and getting this <laughs> settled. Uh, I appreciate your patience with that. Um, oh yeah, man. I appreciate you. I want to give you a shout out for helping me with the Horror Forever group, being an admin there, um, helping manage the community along with John and Chris, Brandon, Joshua, um, all of which I'm going to try to get those guys on the show as well because they're all. Fantastic artist Brandon, oh, yeah. very nice Mojave. You guys hear him on uh, on Halloween Unleashed with Chris every so often. Him and Chris are very knowledgeable. Yeah. Shout out to those guys too. New episodes out right now. I'm going to listen to it while I work in the shop t this evening. Oh yeah, just listen to Chris's new Halloween two uh, episode yesterday. It's really funny. But more more Chris Morgan humor in that one. Right. <laughs> uh, th thanks for being on here, Matt. 
Really appreciate it, and I uh, can't wait to see that new uh, Halloween one when you get finished, since I'm going to get that first H1. Right on, man. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man.